Hey guys, uh, I got a uh, Crazy Taxi Arcade Upright Cabinet here, but uh, it's a pretty fun game. Um, but I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to mod it so you can play another game on it. When I first got this game, I loved it. It's Crazy Taxi. Everyone loves Crazy Taxi. But I found out online that all the hardware supports another game, Jambo Safari. So I went on the eBay. It took a while, actually. They're not that common. But I was able to track down the game cartridge for Jambo Safari. But uh, I came across a little issue, so I'm going to show you how you can play Jambo Safari on your Crazy Taxi. It doesn't take too much effort or time, just a little bit of know-how. Uh, so first let's show you how we swap cartridges. Okay, so here we are on the back of the cabinet. Uh, and there's a little keyhole right there. And uh, you should have a key that looks like this. I think these look kind of neat. I've never seen one like this before, but they might be common in the arcade world. I'm not sure. There's just a bunch of little divots on there instead of uh, grooves like a regular key. In any event, uh, you put this in here. Oh, there it is. It was open already. Uh, and you turn the key and it lifts up the, uh, the cover here. And then you can just lift it up. So back here is the Crazy Taxi game cartridge. As you can see, it says Crazy Taxi. When I first opened this up, there were screws. Four screws here, 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 and here in the four corners. I kept the game cartridge down. I took those out. Um, because I was, I'm, swapping ca I'm swapping cartridges now, and it's just a real pain in the butt to try to put them in and take them out every time. And they don't really do anything besides secure the game cartridge there. I think maybe also for some security reasons, if, if you had it on location in an arcade or something. But they're just kind of there for security. So to, to remove this, you just basically reach in there, and there's some notches on either side. You just, it's a little bit. It's not too hard to get out. You just pull it right out. So, crazy taxi. Back to the story eBay, uh, the, the package comes on eBay, I get my Jambo Safari. So I'm all excited. I'm all pumped, I go and I throw it in here, just like this. So when you put a cartridge in, you put it in, you let it sit down, but you kind of got to firmly push on both ends. Actually, kind of evenly at the same time, otherwise the side will pop up if you push down there. But essentially make all four corners, make sure they all have some pressure on there, because you have to have all the, there's three different, um, slots that need to make contact on these cartridges and if they don't it'll give you an error and you'll have to come back here and do it again. So you can lower that down. I never take my key out, I kind of just close it so it sits in the resting position that way I already know where the key is, but whatever you want to do, you do it yourself. So now that we've got that in there, let's take a look at the game and see how it plays. So imagine my excitement. I have my crazy taxi arcade cabinet. All set up in my man cave downstairs. And I get my new cartridge, and it loads. It works. Yeah, it's worked. It's awesome. So I start driving around. Now I've played this game before. If you haven't played this game, basically the, the 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 point of the game is to get this green target to go around some animals, and you can throw your lasso, pull them in, and do some research on them. It's not hunting. It's safari research. You push the stick forward to throw your lasso, and you pull it back to rein in the animal so you can capture it. Okay, so I'm looking at a giraffe now, and it doesn't work. The shifter doesn't work. I can't throw my lasso. So the whole point of the game, to lasso an animal and pull it in, it doesn't even work. Now keep in mind that this shifter works perfectly on Crazy Taxi. So eventually, I figured out how to do this mod so we can get both games to run on Crazy Taxi. And that's what this video is about. Now at this point, I just want to say, uh, if you do follow this tutorial, uh, you understand that I offer no warranties. Or... So, uh, if you wreck your game while you're using this tutorial, um, I'm not responsible. Uh, having said that, let's go ahead and uh, open this thing up so we can get to the insides and make the modifications. Okay, materials we're going to need. One of them, electrical tape. Another, exacto knife. Third, uh, a screwdriver with a Phillips end, Phillips head, I should say. Uh, I have a really small um, flathead screwdriver. Now, this isn't necessary. You can make it work with a butter knife or something else. So this is an option. This kind of helps. And uh, I guess the most unique are these uh, security Torx screws um, uh, heads. And that's for these types of security screws here. Um, I got the set because you need several different sizes. 
because there's these ones are going to be different size. There's some inside that are going to be a different size. There's some on the side here that are different size. They weren't. They didn't make it easy. So we're going to have to go ahead and uh, use the whole gamut from small to large. Okay. So step one is we're going to remove three screws here, here, and here. And this is going to allow the uh, I guess control panel to just slide forward. And I am using, I'm not sure if this is a size, but uh, it says T40. So that's a, uh, that's an indicator. They all have different numbers. So I assume this is something to do with the size. So I'm using T40 um, torque security bit. slide forward a little bit. And you just want to you know, protect it from jarring itself too much. So now the control panel is down and we can access uh, underneath it. Okay, so the next step is to remove these four uh, bolt covers on the main, um, I guess, uh, border around the, the, the monitor itself. So there's one, there's two up top on either side and there's two on the bottom on either side as well. So to get these off, it's fairly simple. Okay, so you just simply s squeeze, push forward a little bit, and you push that in there, your, uh, your screwdriver in there. Then you just slowly pry it forward. It doesn't take much pressure. Once it starts to slide out, yeah, okay. So you should be able to slide it forward like that, and then they slide directly out to reveal uh, another, a different size of security torque screw underneath. So I'll remove the rest, and we'll move on. So now that we have all four cover remo covers removed, you'll see there are four, excuse me, four Torx screws, two on each side, and there's actually two Phillips head screws uh, holding it down in this position here as well. The screws around the monitor uh, bevel or bezel, the um, the size is oh where was it? I was just looking at it. Ah, T30. So it's actually a, a, a size smaller than the ones we were using previously to remove the the bolts for the control panel. So for these ones, we're using a, a T30 size uh, security Torx bit. Okay, so now that we've removed uh, these both Phillips screws and four uh, Torx security screws, before we can remove this actual fr uh, frame around the monitor itself, we have to remove the two, uh, these two bolts and remove this little plate here. Now these are a different size of security Torx, Torx screw, if you could believe it. The size is a T20. So uh, it's not actually the next size down in the set that I have. Uh, I know the first two that I showed you were a T, uh, I think they were a 40 and a 30, is that right? Uh, but the, there's uh, between the 30 and the 20, there's a 25 and a 27. So the, the first two I showed you were just a step down in size from each other. This is actually uh, three steps down from the, the previous size I showed you. Okay, so now that we have all the screws that we need to take out, they're all, they're all screws and bolts are all gone. Um, now we just simply have to remove this, this bezel and set it aside. It's usually going to be in there. It's going to be in there pretty tight, so give it a little wiggle. Uh, the first time I took it off, that side actually stuck quite a bit, so I took a rubber mallet and I gave it a few light taps underneath, just upward to try to uh, kind of get it loose. But because I've taken mine off before, it's going to come off a lot easier than maybe yours, which has never been removed since the factory put it together. So we'll remove this and set it aside. Okay, so that's everything we have to do to disassemble the... Uh, the frame to get to where we need to go. Where we need to go is right down here. Now, once you get into the machine, what we're going to be focusing on is this uh, section right here. Turn the light. This board here. 
As you can see, there's a big long uh, input pin right here. Now, we're going to take that off by unclipping this, and there's one on the other side. So to unclip that, you just simply push with your finger and it opens up. And there's one on the other side. I'll try to film myself getting that one. It's just back down there. So that one's open, and the, it comes right off. So this really is the main thing what we're trying to get at in here. What we're going to do here is we're going to splice the controls that work the crazy taxis shifting. And we're going to splice that to the uh, proper um, pin location that controls the throwing of the lasso and the, and the reining in of the lasso on Jambo Safari. So looking at the input here, you can see that there are numbers for every wire that goes in. The ones we're concerned about are number 25 and 23. 25 has a green wire and 23 has a purple wire. Essentially what we want to do is splice those so that on the other side where the odd numbers are, or sorry, the even numbers are, 24 and 26. I, I you have a, a green with white stripe and a purple with white stripe which are spliced to the colors on the other side, so they, at least they somewhat match. And we essentially want to take the 25 is green and the 23 is purple. So the 25 we want to splice and have a second wire going to the 24. And the 23, the purple, we splice and have a second wire going to the 26. Now in this case, uh, splicing it's extremely easy, um, partially in part uh, to some cheating on my end. Uh, what I've found is that we have these two connectors here when we open the front panel, and neither of them are in use. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I honestly don't know what they're for. I imagine they're for service, so if something were to go wrong with your machine, I bet they can come in here, plug in the service, and do some diagnostics. But I'm willing to live without that, so there's the disclaimer. I'm not sure what these are for, but I, I compromised this one by doing this mod. Scale. Now what I've done is... Um, if you follow this to the end, uh, I'm not, you know, I did this a while ago, so I'm not sure where this was plugged into previously. It may have been plugged in somewhere else. It may have not. But either way, once you take whatever this was plugged into out of, if it was there, you get a bunch of these types of connectors at the end. Now, these are very handy because these will slip directly into the, the See the top side of the pins where there's nothing there, some empty slots there, that's where they're going to fit into and they'll slip right in there and they'll look like that on the side and they'll be ready to just, ready to go. So I took a, for um, neatness sake, I took the light green with a white stripe and the uh, purple with a white stripe. I can't find that right now, but oh, here it is. And the purple with the white stripe. And I just cut them off, cut them off and then... Um, so I had a piece of wire that was essentially something like this, except it was cut at the bottom. And I exposed some wire here. I spliced, or I, I removed the shielding from the, the wire I wanted to splice into. I wrapped them together. I put electrical tape around it. And then I just uh, plugged this into the appropriate outlet, and uh, we were good to go. But again, just, just make sure that you're willing to sacrifice this one of these. Uh, again, I used the top one, but one of these these outlets here because I um, I couldn't be bothered to look at what they were for. I assumed it was diagnostics. The machine still works, so that's my uh, bad move of the day. I might get some hate for that, but I was willing to do it. So in the end, uh, I believe that these were probably plugged into something because I wrapped them all up together so they wouldn't be flying around touching things on the board. So it's probably best to, to wrap them all together with some electrical tape. And uh, I, uh, I, I just wrapped them all together and then tied it here so it was just nice and neat off to the side. So to summarize, we are taking the light green wire that goes to number 25 and we're going to splice into it, meaning uh, not cut it, but cut the shielding so we can attach another wire and send that signal simultaneously to position number 24. So it's going to go to number 25 and 24 every time you use the, I'm not sure if that's the up or the down shift, but one of the directions of shifting. Now the opposite direction of shifting, so let's say if the 25 was up, the downshift, which is in position number 23, we are going to splice into that one, as you can see with the electrical tape I have down here, 
Again, not cutting it, just splicing into it. So we still send the signal to that, the number 23, but also send it to number 26. And uh, yeah, so after that, after you get it all spliced, um, you just plug her back in. And again, remember to close the sides, close the clips on each end, and uh, you'll be good to go. Okay, so have one quick look uh, before uh, you're done fiddling around in here. Uh, as you can see, I've got my uh, all my ends that I uh, hacked into to take some parts off of, uh, all tied up at the end and tied to the the um, the shielding here just to keep them out of the way, stop them from bouncing around down there on the on the board, and you, you just make sure that you give your uh, your your pin connector just another good push down. And at this point, it, it's probably best to uh, to try out your games before you close this all up. Now I already know they work because I've given them a quick test. But uh, on your end, you should you should definitely take a look now before you you put everything back together. She loads. Another good sign. So we just gotta find ourselves an animal. There's one. And can I throw my lasso? Yes, I can. And can I pull back on it? Yes, I can. So as we can see, the game works. And the mod doesn't interfere with either game. So sending the signal to both, to, four, to those four pins instead of the original two, doesn't interfere with each game. So you can just swap out the cartridge as you need to. It's pretty cool. So as a little bonus, uh, there's a third game here that doing this mod allows you to play. There are some issues though, so I don't really include it as a fully playable game. However, you can play it. I'll explain. And it's 18-wheeler. Uh, so let's pop this in. See how this works. Now here's a little tip when it comes to 18 wheeler. There's actually uh, it doesn't look like it's loading properly for the longest time. It just gives you a black screen. Where the other games give you loading screens. This is normal, you just gotta wait. When I first got this, I was pretty bummed that it wouldn't load at all. But eventually you just wait and wait and wait and it'll load. So as I said, it loads, it just takes a little while. So here's the issue with this game. You can play it, but the 18-wheeler cabinet has a different kind of wheel. This wheel is a little bit bigger, but it's full 360. That means you can turn the wheel as much as you want one way, as much as you want the other way. It's never going to end. This is more of a 270. You can only turn it so far to the left, and you can only turn it so far to the right. So what does that mean? Turning is going to be a little bit more difficult. The other issue, um, the shifter works. It, if you don't do the mod, this game won't be able, you won't be able to shift out a low gear and a high gear. With this mod, you can. But having those uh, two wires spliced into four pins does affect this game. What it does do, is every time you shift, it changes the view from third person to first person and back again, every time you shift to high. Also, to stay in high gear, you have to hold it in high gear. Okay, so I'm in low gear. I can hit the gas, and I'm able to steer, right? Everything's good. I'm in my second part of low gear, in my third, uh, I guess, gear of the low area, and here it's going to tell me to shift to high. 
shift up. So I go to shift, and it'll. You got to hold. I'm sorry. You got to shift down or to shift up. And only when you hold it will you stay in high gear. See, I'm in high gear. And as soon as I let go, I'm back to low. Hold it again. I'm in high gear. And you can tell every time I shift from high to from. I'm sorry. It's only when you go from low to high. It's only when you pull back. It changes the view. However, the game is still playable if you're willing to hold this, which isn't that big of a deal. And if you're uh, willing to put up with, you know, I always shift twice to try to get into third person. It's just what I prefer. But it's completely playable. Turning is kind of an issue. You turn all the way, and you don't really turn. You have to, if you turn it just slightly, you get some real turning. So you got to be, a, it takes a feather touch. However, it's definitely playable, so that's how you can play not two, but three games on your crazy taxi cabinet by just doing a simple mod. Thanks for watching.